Hello. Um, welcome, everybody. Today, I'm going to be introducing Satoshi's Games. Uh, my name is Carlos Roldan, founder of Satoshi's Games, and I'm in charge of the development side of Satoshi's Games. So our primary goal was to create innovative Bitcoin gaming experiences. And the actual further mission and further goal was allowing users to earn Bitcoin by playing games. So I'm going to give you a bit of the introduction of how all of this started. And basically, we will be talking about how was the gaming in the 80s and why we are related to a retro style. We'll be also talking about our tournaments that we have, that they are based on how it used to be in the 80s and shooting for a lightning esports style. So, <laughs> that was cool, that was cool. <laughs> so let's go. First of all, let's talk about the actual matter, which is building games on Lightning Network. And I can stand out three main features. The first of the feature is like it's a reckless gaming experience, so recommended to do, because you have to create a game and you have to think about the value that the game has to do with Lightning because maybe you want to add a specific game where you need to, have to create value from an incoming transaction to there allow anyone to extract that value if wins or kill an enemy or actually kill another player in the game. So it's games of value where you extract and import value and the format of value that we are using is Bitcoin. So it's reckless and you know it's extremely cool as well because Lightning is that cheap in terms of transactions that you can allow yourself to test the game on mainnet even if it will fail because transactions are super, super low um, in terms of cost. So, it's also interesting the way that you can create new incentive mechanisms so you can allow players to earn Satoshi within the game and this brings an amazing loyalty to the game. So if you allow players not only to have fun while playing a game but also to receive Bitcoin, it's a double bonus that actually is important to consider if you want to add it. Um, let's throw back to the actual gaming hubs that exist. Just, you know, there are digital gaming hubs that we all know, such as Steam, Origin, digital platforms where you can play games and have fun while doing it. And then you have these physical gaming hubs that they may, they may be like gaming jams or they can be um, meetups of gamers that they all get together and they play and they have fun doing it. So it's important to consider both of them because what we wanted to build was a gaming hub that is centralized in the sense that each member of the platform that is playing is playing in our platform, which is in a centralized server, but it can have the decentralized um, structure of playing against other players that they have their node connected, and economically, you are interacting with them uh, in a non-centralized manner by using Lightning and using their nodes and using uh, transactions. So, some of the problems that we see from the, from the slides before that they are talking about the you know, Steam origin that we consider to, to try to target and to fix is like most of the platforms that they are there, they are not based on a real currency. So, so they have their own you know, Steam balance or they have their own points or tokens even that you know, they added value to that and they play with it. The second one is the transference direction. In order to have a profitable business, basically what they do is they have this Steam balance that you can move your cash to Steam and you cannot withdraw the cash from Steam. So it stays in Steam and you have to spend it on Steam, which is, you know, it's cool for Steam and it's cool for you if you want to buy something off Steam. But if you have the option that by some reason you get tired of, you know, spending that, you don't have the option to sell it on Steam to then withdraw the value of, you know, in form of cash from Steam to your node, 
which is only one direction, goes from you to Steam, and it doesn't go forward. It doesn't, it doesn't come back. So this is the actual, you know, the third element that we stand out about. No possibility to extract such value from the platform. Mm, so what do we do with this? So we basically, as I say, we allow, you know, people to earn bitcoins by playing games and there are a few mechanics where you have different games that you can interact with and you can earn satoshi some of the games you can you know earn satoshi for free and some of those games we incentivize the game the gaming experience on where you have to end the game and if you finish the game you can withdraw the satoshi that you collected within the game i will you know show the live demo and you will understand that more Mm, we also provide this bidirectional value transfer. So if you put, you know, your money, your value within the platform because you want to buy either an avatar or you want to play in a game such as Lightning Agar, <clears throat> and you kill other players and you are earning satoshi, then those satoshi that you are earning from the platform, you can extract them to your node and use them with, you know, whatever you want. So there is this bidirectional value transfer implemented that. We saw before that it's not possible in big traditional data platforms. And this also has to do with the withdrawal value that we add. So you can withdraw the value that you generate. You can generate value uh, by playing games. It doesn't have to do anything with your advertising or your data. We just incentivize the gaming experience. Mm, you can check it out in the websites that they are there, but we will show a, a demo right now. So talking about the esports, so I want to recreate the scenario in the 80s, 90s, where gamers used to go together in fairs and you know these recreational halls, and they used to play these physical games, and you extracted in when you have a score, you could extract your score in tickets that then you could exchange those tickets for other valuable items in that recreational hall. I mean, do you know? I mean. Raise up your hand if you know what I'm talking about when you have this recreational host that you play like basketball or any play and you, your score is printed in a ticket format. You go to the you know, owner, you extract that in a ticket, you exchange it for some object or value that you like, and then you leave. So we're trying to approach the same in an esports environment with Lightning. So basically, you are playing a tournament of a specific game and when you are playing, your score gets stored in a database where others are playing. And bef before playing, you have to pay a ticket to entrance. So there is this concept of a jackpot where you put, you know, you play with your ticket, and then the winner gets the jackpot. And then the jackpots are, of course, you know, satoshis that you can extract from the platform. And that's the inspiration of what we wanted to do. Uh, and that's the actual story of the 80s that has to do with this. That's also one of the reasons that we have kind of a retro arcade style within the platform. That's cool and that's what we've done during the last roughly year. And this is something that we want to announce. And this is what we'll be working on from now on to forward. And this is a completely different platform. And I'm introducing Elixir from Satoshi's Games. It's currently on their, on their heavy development, and basically this is not only target for Lightning and Bitcoin enthusiasts. This is more for game developers that they are having some problems because due to the, the gaming industry, you are likely to have a full game if you have the funds up front. And that's a problem because you may not be able to have the funds or you may not be economically wealthy to allow that, but your skills and your abilities may be good, but you know, due to economical reasons, you can't. So the product we're building is a desktop application. It can also is multi-platform, so you can also access from the web. Where, gamer, where game developers, they can have access to an API to implement Lightning into their games. Not a standard uh, Lightning API, an API focused on the gamer needs. That's one of the reasons it's important to consider. The second thing is it has crowdfunding and marketplace features. It's so important to link because now gamers will be able to have 
a crowdfunding campaign, but only of crowdfunding projects specifically for gamers and the gamers. So this feature and the marketplace feature we are using in terms of uh, the stack, we are using BTC Pay Server as they provide those features already with their instance. So we're extracting that as this is a, um, a source that we chose to, to implement. Mm, within the gaming platform, you'll be able to distribute games, run crowdfunding campaigns to fund your games. There will be game jams, which are hackathons where you, you know, create a, a game and with this API and the winner wins a, a prize and, and is there. And you will run communities where you can create a community out of your game and, and you know, and hide there. I can show you them as well about this in our current state. I want to build a lightning game with us. I mean, we're so open to collaborate with anyone, even if you have an idea or you have designing skills. So we are open and we are looking forward for anyone who wants to, you know, bring any idea out of the out of the idea phase to actually a lightning game or, or just a, a normal game. If that's the case, you can send us an email or you can tweet us and we are highly responsible. We also have a Telegram group where you, you can access that I'll show you after. So, um, the person behind this, the people behind this are Federico and, and me. There are also some other people which are collaborators that they work in the project, but we are full time on this and we are uh, currently bringing this every, every day. Those are our social media that you can find us on Medium, uh, Twitter, and you know, LinkedIn. And now I'm going to show you how it works, the platform. So, okay. Oh, this is. This is Satoshi's games, Satoshi's.games, which is the web platform. Let me put a better resolution. Cool. So, was a little bit. Anyway, this is normally if you don't have a user over here, this is how it looks. So basically, you know, you can play free games. That's cool. Um, let me refresh this. So. Yeah, so basically you can create an account. I mean, you can play free games always, but those are free games that they don't have. To, I mean, they are crypto theme related. I'm going to show you an example for, for instance. Let's play this game, which is a, it's a text adventure based game where you revive the history of how Bitcoin was created. So, you know, Banks are freezing, global economy is dead, you decide to create Bitcoin, so you incarnate, you know, you live, you are under the shoes of Satoshi Nakamoto, you are creating Bitcoin, and some things start to happen, then you are in a cypherpunk room, then you go to Bitcoin Talk, the forum, and, and you play, you know, this game is for free, you need to be registered, but it doesn't have any Lightning element integrated. So we don't require you to use Lightning for this, just like Bitcoin or so yeah, that's for example, uh, one game that is for free. I'm gonna now show you a, oh, that's cool, Halfini send us an email. So um, I'm gonna show you what an actual, how can you maximize your, your gaming experience using Satoshi's games. I'm gonna create an account and in order to do so, you need to pay an invoice. And anyone wants to do the, you know, the honor to pay uh, an invoice. 1,000 satoshis will be the, quicker, the quickest one to do it. Sure. Wanna do it? Cool. I think if the internet is currently working, this will be automatically updated. So, okay. The account has been created. This is your seed that you should copy because in order that you lose your, your account and you don't want to pay every time you want to log in, you have a seed. But alternatively, if you are using a full node, either with LND or C Lightning, you can always recover your account by pasting the, 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 lightning, the, the transaction has, the, the Lightning has. You can, 
yeah, the pre image, you can paste it and you recover your account. So yeah, we suppose you, you have copied this and, and you are gonna put a name, for example, Lightning Hack Day. So, you know, let's update my account. And I'm gonna go through a walkthrough where you can, you know, play some games, but we're talking about Lightning games. First of all, before getting into games, let me introduce two things. One of the things that are interesting is like, we want to drive uh, the gaming development based on the community. So you can always come here, check out what are the games that you'd like to see, and vote. Because at the end of every month, we'll be starting the development of a new game that you guys choose. So you can do a vote, you know, one user is equal to one vote, or one ticket that it's a, in, it's a market item that you can buy is equal to one vote. So let's say that you want to vote, I don't know, for a landing monopoly. It looks, you know, catchy. So this is how the preview it is done. So you can have a, a view about how it's the game. And, you know, you're going to vote it. Mm. Now let's play a, a challenge. Those type of games, they are challenges that you can actually make satoshis. You can stack satoshis by playing those games. Normally, these games are only, you can only play once per day. So you can, you know, continue and come forward and come back and return to the platform to keep playing and keep earning satoshis. For this high hack day, we have decided to open the entire game for the entire uh, hack day. So you can play always and, and I'll, I'll show you how it works. When you click in play, it starts in three, two, one. And you have now to match the color. Well, well now I, I'm not good at it, but you know, you have to match the color of the dice with the color of the base. Every time you match, it's 10 satoshis. You can try, 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 and you know, get the satoshis to your account. When you're in your account, you can withdraw the satoshis, and that's cool. You have until the end of, of the Lightning Hack Day to do it. So, <laughs> in case you want to do it. Now, let's actually jump into the games. So those are the main games that we have in the Lightning Network. Those are games that they are a off from other popular and catchy. You can see the, the great game is a Candy Crush style, but with a crypto theme uh, integrated. And I'll show you how it's a preview. So you basically, you know, you tap the blocks to move them and you have to stack three blocks of the item. So you are uh, walking through the game and, and speeding the, the game. It also has a RPG style. This is the classical Flappy Bear version coming into more uh, Bitcoin Lightning uh, environment. This is one that I'm going to go through through a walkthrough. And this is a neck off of Super Mario. The way it works with Lightning is in the following way. You have, okay, it's quite. So you have, you can always start uh, the game for free. You don't need to pay. And you can start the game. You press S and then you start. Every coin you collect in the game is a real Satoshi that you can withdraw from the game. You see, I'm picking up Satoshi in the game. <laughs> Those are the, the Satoshi that I'm collecting. As you can see, they're updating. And I can, cast the, I can do a cash out as soon as I complete the game, which are probably around eight, seven levels. So that's cool, you know? But if you die in the middle of the process, you have to start over again. And that's where the actual mechanic starts, uh, and the incentive process. So you can, you know, if you think this is going to be too hard for you, it may be, it might not be. You can buy additional lives. You know, that at least they give you like some sense, a feeling of, of secure that you know you may die once, but you can still collect more satoshis. Or if you feel like you are too good at it and you want to, you know, uh, make us go in bankruptcy, you can go and buy a multiplier and every satoshi that you picked is worth <laughs> two. So every time you pick one satoshi is equal to two. So let's check it out. It's also important to consider the time because you only have 70 seconds per level and 
this makes you to choose between be greedy, pick all of the coins, or be intelligent and end the game. So yeah, that's this game. You can always try it out. It's quite cool. So just a few people have end the game. Um, it's quite complicated, eh? but before it used to be five worlds, so it was so long, and we have reduced the amount of worlds to only one. So this is how long it is. So if you actually save Satoshi Nakamoto, which is asking for help right here, you will be able to, you know, he'll be able to compensate you with Satoshi's. So that's that's the one knockoff of Super Mario right there. And another one interesting game that we came across is. Lightning Agar. I, that's, I think, one of the best uh, games that we have at the moment. Um, this game, uh, we are going to shoot for a big tournament that we expect to have later on with, you know, Constantine game, which is awesome. Here we're we'll doing a demonstration, and we'll be also playing a big competition about this game. The way this works is, is simple. So, I mean, raise your hand if you know the game called Agar.io. So I may have understand it. Okay, that's cool, that's, that's a lot of them. So for the people that doesn't understand how this game works, it's pretty simple. You start like a ball, a circle, and then you have to eat other players. Now, before starting, you need to pay an invoice. That's like a, a cost, an entrance fee. And when you eat other players, you eat and you eliminate them from the match and you have their satoshis. So it's a PvP player concept. And, and that's, that's how it works. So you play against other people, and if you kill them, you, you, you know, get your satosis. It's very important one thing before playing. Here, where it says important, is important to consider. You have to type the same username, which is a unique username, than your username in Satoshi's games. So this is the way we link you, and the way we make sure when you kill somebody in the game, you earn their satosis. And then you can go to your profile, which is here, and you know, withdraw the satosis. There are two ways to withdraw. One of them is through Lightning Joel, if you have it connected, and the other way using the typical payment request, and we go and we, we develop to you. Before finishing, I want you to give you a quick walkthrough through the esports style that I was mentioning at the beginning of the of the talk. And the way it works is in the marketplace, you have a few items to do. Mm, you have a few avatars, so you can customize your profile. And you know, if you, if you see something you like every every day, new avatars are being updated, and you can. Buy one, hold one avatar, and you'll be displayed in the score with your avatar so you others can see you, you know, your avatar. A ticket gives you the option to play a tournament or to have an extra vote when there are new games to vote. When you buy one ticket, um, you can join a tournament. Those tournaments are limited in terms of time. They last for 48 hours and they are they are running on the weekends. It costs 50k satoshis, and the winner gets the jackpot. I mean, if there are three guys, you know, it's 50k per, by three. Multiply by three. If it's 10, it's 10 multiplied by three. It depends on how many guys they join. Um, that's how it works. You just pay it. Basically, it's a payment request. And then once you pay, you have the access to participate. You see the ticket here in the section where the ticket icon is. Now. If you feel like you are not too good, you don't want to risk, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to go and, and buy a ticket directly, you want to play, we have this score where you can check out the Lightning Games and check others' score. So you can see the guys who are er, uh, winning in the tournaments because they are represented with an icon of a tournament icon like this one. And you can see how much the win was the previous winner because it says in the platform uh, here when someone wins. Um, so you can compare your score to the guys who win when at the end of the tournament or the esports tournament. So that's the way it works. Here we see something that you know got 22k satoshis and probably extract them from the game. 
called Satoshi Nakamoto. And yeah, so this is the score, and you can you know you can show your avatar to others here. In a, in a means. That's been that's been that, that's it. And this is a link. If you guys want to you know scan this QR code, you you will be able to play either this or using Agatha, uh, agar .games, You'll be able to go and play the tournament, which we are about to play in. How much, Constantine? In 15 minutes? Half an hour? I don't know. I think it's. I my <laughs> well, we'll be playing a tournament, and I think it's in half an hour. And this is the link, or you can go scan, or scan this QR code and you know, try to eat some players and earn the statuses. That's been the talk, and thank you. Thank you for listening. If you have any, any questions. Well, yes. uh, how, how do you make money? You charge also the people who create games on your platform, like a percentage, or you only make money by selling the items, like the special avatar stuff? There are two ways that we make revenue. The first way is we have in-app purchases, so everything in the marketplace, you know, is, they are digital content, and those are direct revenue that we take. The other way is from the esports tournament. When that happens, we take a 20% of the of the jackpot, that's the way. Right now, mm, due to the complexity of allowing other games to be running with Lightning in our platform, that was why we wanted to announce the, that we are working on a new platform where it's easily to implement games with Lightning because it runs on the desktop; it doesn't require web. So, at that point, we are. You know, basing to use a revenue model based on the API that we will provide them to Lightning transactions. So, <clears throat> I assume you don't plan to have any kind of KYC, right? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I mean, okay. So my question is, basically, I mean, you can win bitcoins on Lightning, so you can win real money playing games. So you can probably code up some API, and then it sounds like you're incentivizing machine learning research. <laughs> so I mean, how long do you think you can get away with not implementing anti-cheat and stuff like that? Because uh... <laughs> yeah, and well, as we're into the joke, the actual uh, way that we can overcome the way of machine learning taking place is creating, uh, we can connect uh, in, um, oh man, I forgot. This is really annoying, it's a very annoying service of Google that you know, it makes you choose pictures of the things that you see so you can allow, captcha. exactly. That's the way, that's, that's, that's why, generate random captcha, and that's one of the things. And we also have an automatic system that, if you remember, you need to have an account to play Lightning games that allow you to extract. Every single account is linked to a public key that we take it from when you either pay or we take the node public key, or when you log in with you know, a web URL, you do a digital signature login, uh, login, and we take as well the public key. If we detect any suspicious activity from the withdrawals or the gaming, we automatically ban, and we have a ban list already of malicious or suspicious uh, nodes, I mean accounts that they are linked to a node. This way of having only one user is equal to one node is a, you know, you will still will be able to get, buy a, do another node, synchronize, and do it again. But, you know, we will be able to detect something suspicious, register it, and make it to play again. Yeah, I think captures are a reasonable uh, first attempt at, at mitigating this for, for single player games. But for the multiplayer example, like the Tugger IO thing, you cannot realistically use captures, in my opinion, because uh, the, the human player can stop the captcha if it is before the game starts, and then you cannot randomly pause a multiplayer game to have the player solve the captcha. So, how would you use a captcha in a multiplayer game? In a multiplayer game, you can do intervals where you can create ca uh, random captchas uh, based on. But then you, you need to seat. stop it for every player, and you, you need to have every player solve the captcha. I mean, is it a choosing between a user experience that is fancy or a system that works?
Yeah. So it's up to the provider if you want to have something fancy and doesn't work or something secure and not fancy. That's thing. Anyone, any other question? Okay, so, well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.